political brown kid here. And what I want to talk to you about is this whole um, Egypt, this whole Egypt, um, Afrocentric Egypt um, controversy that Egypt is making a big deal about. Egypt is really pushing, being proactive to set the narrative. And um, we all know why. I mean, I know there's a lot of, well, I shouldn't say we all know why, because there's a lot of ignorant black jokers out here in the world, totally ignorant. But let me just explain something to y'all. The one thing that I, I'm, I'm going to appreciate what the Egyptians are doing, even though I think the Egyptians are totally wrong, totally wrong, don't know what the heck they're talking about. But I'm also going to say this. I love what they're doing. What they're doing is very crafty. It doesn't benefit us as black people. It's not right, but I know what they're doing. It's the same thing with Donald Trump. I tell people that all the time, too. Donald Trump, as far as presidency, didn't like it, but he was very smart in a lot of things that he did. I'll talk about that in another video. Um, but here's the deal. If anyone doesn't know, you had first you had, um, I guess, Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith had, I think both Will and Jada were involved in this. If not, then I could be wrong. It was a special on Cleopatra that came out on Netflix. And they used a black actress to play Cleopatra. And before, before that documentary, or well, I don't even know if it was a documentary, but before that um, film um, aired, Weeks before it aired, months before it aired, I think, probably a month or two before it aired, they, Egypt released a statement that old racist archaeologist from that used to head um, up the Egyptian artifacts. He came out, released a statement. Everybody was bashing Cleopatra being portrayed as a black woman. And they both did not. This, the Egyptian government, I think, denied it. Um, and as well as I think his name was Nawaz, Aziz or Nawaz. I don't know what his name was, but you have to look him. He was one of the he was probably one of the longtime Egyptologists that was running, I think, during the 90s. Definitely when I used to watch anything Egyptian, I used to see his foolish face on my television. Here's the deal. This is what they all keep failing to miss. Number one, and I'm going to say this. Because there's a lot of elements, so I'm probably going to be scatterbrained because I'm just freestyling. It's what I do. But I'm smart. I think I can handle it. What they're doing with these whole DNA tests is they're messing up a lot of people's world. Number one, who's doing the, conducting the DNA test? Who created the DNA test? Who's showing you these DNA results? You have to question that. Uh, listen, science is not perfect. Science is not right. I, I did a whole video talking to y'all about science. That's why I'm telling y'all, y'all have to watch all of my videos, because they all tie in some way, somehow. Science is not perfect. They told Galileo almost, I do believe it was Galileo, I'm not a historian. Galileo almost lost his life because he said the earth was round. Everybody said it's flat. He said, I don't know about that. Check your facts, dog. And then he almost lost his life over saying that the earth was round. And then now here we are today, fast forward hundreds of years, and that is the running theory that the earth is round, you know, and from pictures that they showed out of space, I can't deny that, I guess. I don't know. You know, I haven't been out there, but it looks to be round to me. You had doctors in the seventies pulling patients into their office, talking about you got lung cancer. You about died in about three weeks. And the patient like, man, how, how did I get lung cancer? And the doctor's telling them, I don't know. And the whole while while he's telling them, I don't know, he got a cigarette in his hand. The doctor has a cigarette in his hand. They used to smoke in hospitals like it was like it was nothing, like they was like they were drinking coffee. I don't make this stuff up. Now they understand it. Call, you can't do that. This whole COVID fiasco was a total fiasco. And that's one thing you could say that kind of Trump kind of was right about in some instances. He was kind of wrong, kind of right. Kind of wrong, kind of right. Whole, whole fiasco. They told y'all, look, they told us Pluto was a planet. I had to remember, I had to memorize nine planets when I was growing up. Now, if I didn't have to memorize, memorize Pluto, I probably would have got a hundred on that test. It's only eight. Pluto's an exoplanet or a micro. I had no idea what they classified Pluto as. 
but they get stuff wrong. Science is only right until it's right. They told you that eggs was bad for you. It was too much cholesterol in it. Now eggs are probably the best thing you can eat. They, they don't know what these people don't know what they're talking. Science is only right the moment they tell you that it's right. And then three years from now, you find out that everything that science told you was a lie. And so I'm saying that to say this, and I know I ran it on for three minutes about that. But I'm saying that to say this is that when they start pushing these DNA tests in front of your face and saying, hey, look at these markers. See, it, this is proof that this is what this is. And you thinking that, you know, science and the white man is so right that they know what they're talking about. You have to understand well, who's conducting the test. What is your agenda for this? You know that they've been they've been based in the foundation of their work off of a lie. They've told you lies about black people for since the beginning of time. They cannot back down off of these lies. They cannot come back and say, oops, we were wrong. Because I'm going to tell y'all what we've all what they've always told you. And, and even Paul Mooney, the great Paul Mooney, his he tells you comedy, but there's always truth in the joke. And Paul Mooney definitely was one that had truth, truth in the joke. Paul Mooney would tell you that white people will take you. If they like you, they'll take you. And what they also will do is they'll discredit other people. They've been discrediting black nations since the beginning of time. They have been doing it since the beginning of time. There have been so many great black civilizations that even though like when they know that a civilization was black and they can't really hide, the, the, they can't really say, OK, well, we can hide or mask this. They just don't even talk about those societies. You look at all of those continents in Africa that dealt in, um, I can't even think of it right now. Um, like Timbuk Timbuktu was one of them. You look at all of those great societies that had all of those great trade routes and had all of those minerals that they traded and spices that they traded. And those communities thrive and flourish. They're not going to show you movies about it. They're not going to build. They're not going to build a hundred million dollar budget movie about some black people on a the screen. They don't even want to put a black man and a black woman together in a major movie or even on Netflix period. So what makes you think that they're going to talk about black societies? They've been telling you they've been telling you. And like Paul Mooney said before, too, Egypt was so advanced. Egypt was the America before America was America. It was the first iteration of America. Egypt was the epitome of civilization in that time period. And all of the Greek philosophers and travelers that went to Egypt, so they basically taught, and what is science? Science is also things that you observe. That's how you prove science. You prove science through observation. You run test trials on things and you do observations. So if you observe something, it becomes a scientific fact. That's what you do. You run test studies and you do observations. And you had all of these Greek philosophers, Herodotus, and I forget the other jokers' names, but they wrote in their books, these people, these Egyptians were black people. They were Nubians. And now you want to fast forward three, 4,000 years and they want to rewrite history and tell you, no, they were not. And now they're going to try to come and say, well, look, the DNA test proves this. And look at Egypt today. Egypt is so white. Why would you think that it was black? Well, let me ask this question. And I said this before in one of my other videos. If an alien came to planet Earth today and he was and he's in the in his alien people, the, his alien leaders told him, we're sending you five down on to planet. We're sending you five alien analysts. You're, you're our historians. You're supposed to be, you're our interstellar historian. So I want you all to go to Earth and document what you see on these different continents in these different worlds and come back and make a historical catalog of the people that you meet. If those five alien historians, interstellar historians come to Earth and they walk among clandestinely amongst the people of America, and they do studies, if they report back, what are the first things that they're going to say? If the leaders ask, well, well, what are the people like on North American continent? Who are the indigenous people of North America? Those aliens will probably say Caucasians because Caucasians make up what, they're, what the population in America is 300 million people. Caucasians make up 70% of that 300 million. 
So they're like, what, 120, maybe 200 million, 250 million. They're the dominant people that are here. So, of course, people are going to say that the original people of North America are Caucasians. No one's going to go to a reservation in Wyoming or Utah. Well, I don't know where that I couldn't even tell you where Native American is today. I couldn't even tell you. I'm assuming there's somewhere out there. And the only reason why I know that is because I watch Yellowstone. So I'm assuming they're in Wyoming and Utah. I have no idea. But they're not going to say that. And you can watch the Egyptian channel now and you can see that the, the, like the, the lower in, um, um, indigenous e Egyptians, they're black with woolly hair. They look similar to some Ethiopians. A little different construction and features. But, that, but as far as the skin tone and the texture of the hair, yeah. So you can look at them and tell, but of course the people in the higher up positions are white because white people, listen, Egypt has been conquered by so many other, and just because, and, and this is also the other thing too, what people fail to realize is this, just because the Nubians and the Nubians, um, i.e. Um, the society of Kush, the kingdom of Kush, in the Kemets, i.e. Egypt, just because those Kemetic and Kushite individuals lived different, lived in different societies and had different cultures, doesn't mean that they were of different races. That's like saying that the Irish and the and the Scottish people are not Caucasian because they have different cultures. Just because they live differently and traded amongst each other, but live separate, doesn't mean that there wasn't um, that they weren't a part of that they weren't all Nubians or Africans, and that's what they were. But they want to make things seem like oh, because these people were different, that they had to be of different races. That's bullcrap. They'll also tell you this too. You look at the people of Spain. You look at some of the, the Spaniard women. They have full lips. They have um, high backsides, like black women. Some of them, most of them. Like the, I mean, I shouldn't say most of them, but you look at a lot of them. They do. Because the Moors went there and conquered. Over, the Moors traveled all the way over there and whooped ass all the way along and went over there and bred with those women and dropped off their genetics. But what will white people tell you? Because they said the same thing. I've heard this on, again, I told you, Bill Maher is such a racist. He's such a racist. And his show was racist. This was years ago. This was years ago, years ago. And, and I'm saying that in my personal opinion. And when I say that, I say because he's a ignorant and he doesn't know what he's talking about. And he's just like every other white person where they just talk and talk and talk and they think they're smart, but they're not as smart as they think that they are. But on his show, I don't know if it was Bill Maher that said it or one of his guests. I think probably it was more or less one of his guests, but it, it could have been Bill Maher too. I, I forget. But this show was so old, they were talking about Egypt and they said that um, the people of Egypt probably looked like, um, I think they said Vin Diesel or Mariah Carey, as opposed to looking pure African. And I've heard the same, I've heard the same thing said about the Moors. They'll tell you the Moors weren't black. They were, looked like Vin Diesel. They'll tell you that because they always discredit to say that black people could, that, that, that was... No one could achieve those feats at that time. Who built those pyramids? And Paul Mooney said it. They, they, they never want to give black people credit for anything. Who built the pyramids? They, instead of saying some black people built it, they'd rather say aliens came down here and built them. They'd rather tell you an alien built them. But as soon as they start talking about the Sumerian kingdom in, in Atlantis, and they'll immediately point to a bunch of white people and that white people created that society. But, can't, but will refuse to say that Egypt was a black culture that was created and, and gave you art, science, and math. They can't do it. Even in my school, they'll admit this. Because white people won't admit it. I, again, I, like I said, they will not admit that Egypt was a black society. It started out as a one. But it, in my school, I don't know what school y'all went to. And maybe my teacher, well, he was already wrong anyway because he tried to say that the Egyptians weren't black. But he did mention that the fourth, I think it was the fourth dynasty, but basically it was when Egypt was on the decline. That's when the 
the the Kushites took it over, I do believe, and that's when it became a black society, when it was on its decline. Now it's on its decline. Now the blacks are running it, right? That's that's when we got a hold of it, when it was on its decline and it was over. It was over for the kingdom. It was on its way out. It was past its prime. They'll admit that, but have you ever noticed they don't ever talk about, you haven't found any black mummies? They never talk about those, that dynasty. That dynasty was over there for, I think, a couple of hundred years. And haven't found not one black mummy. All the mummies that they find over there are white. All the reconstructed images of mummies over there are white. But they don't mention that dynasty. So I'm just mentioning, I'm just giving a hypothetical to say that if their theory is true, that Egypt was never black, but then this one black, you know, um, era came in, they never talk about it. But we already know their premise is wrong because Egypt was a black society. And then Egypt got overran by, I think the Assyrians came in there. You definitely knew the Romans came in. Romans came in and conquered a lot of people. They conquered that whole, I guess, Middle Eastern region. And thus you have the look of Egypt that you have today. Because people started interbreeding and interbreeding or inter, you know, interracially breeding, interracially, I don't mean interbreeding as one family, but interracially breeding, interracially breeding, breeding between blacks and whites. And you got the dilutedness that you have now. It's just like if you had two light skinned blacks getting together and then those light skinned blacks and another group of light skinned blacks getting together, you're going to have that and you're going to have a different type of look. And that's the look that you have in Egypt today. No bull crap. But Egypt, what I'm saying to you is this. Egypt is setting the narrative because they have to control the narrative that black societies were not that great. And that's the one thing. The one thing reason why I say I give them credit for it is because of this. When you look at black people, black people do not control any narratives. We we are probably the most pitiful group of people on planet Earth. When you see these documentaries come out about Jesus Christ, Yeshua, when you see these documentaries come out about him, you don't hear the black narratives trying because we don't control any medias. And the medias that we control, they suckers. Oprah Winfrey is a sucker. She's not going to fight for you. She's not going to risk her own network and risk losing all her good Christian white folks. To, to um to fight a particular battle and she doesn't have a news is she doesn't have a news publication you know that's mostly going to be held from a news perspective and the black people in america don't also they don't even care they just go along we've been we've been so traumatized and um and conditioned to go along with what white people tell us we are scared to fight particular battles so anytime you see jesus being portrayed or should i say yeshua being portrayed as a blonde-haired, blue-eyed person and not somebody of Nubian descent, we don't say anything about it. We let the TV go on. And again, let me give you the flip side of that. Madonna did a video for all you young people. You can look it up. She did a video called Like a Prayer back in back in the 80s. I think that was the 80s when Madonna came out with Like a Prayer. And she had Leon, um, the actor, Leon playing it, um, playing the role of um, Jesus, Yeshua, in, the, uh, in her video. White people were in an uproar. That video caused the uproar because they had a black Jesus. And that's what I mean, the difference between black white people wanting to control the narrative because they understand the power of media. Black people don't understand the power of media or controlling a narrative. And that's why I give the Egyptians credit, even though I say that they're wrong, they're at least trying to control the narrative to say, hey, hold up. Our people were never, we were never a black society because they fought the battle with this um, film with Jada Pinkett and or Will Smith. And they also fought fighting the battle because there's a statue of an Egyptian statue of, with a figure of Nas. Because, you know, Nas had the album cover, um, I Am. If you go back to his album, his that was his third album release. And he did an album called I Am. He had him himself. Um, looking like a, a, a mummy um, in a golden sarcophagus, you know, and he had his image there uh, and similar to what the Egyptians would do. And they put that figure, I guess, in a museum. And now the Egyptians are back on in an uproar over a statue, over a statue. Again, 
So now, again, like I say, they're trying to control the narrative to say, hey, look, y'all going to stop this blackening of Egypt. They're trying to control their narrative. Black people never control their narrative. Black people never try to say, look, let's have a conversation. You don't see black, um, you don't see black um, um, documentaries or studies um, refuting the origins of Yeshua, the origins of quote unquote, the Christ, the Messiah. You don't see it. You don't see them refuting the societies of Egypt. You know, this documentary was on Cleopatra and yeah, they just used her as a black image, which is cool, but they don't refute. You don't see like the, the hard um, ref, um, repudiations and, and the rebuttals or, um, you know, the questioning of the Egyptians and the original people. How many documentaries have you seen of when they talk about cavemen in the first man? When they start showing early man on television, you'll always see a white guy with a bunch of hair on him, a bunch of hair all over his face, a bunch of hair on his back, a bunch of hair on his chest. White cavemen. They don't show Africans as the first man. And, there, and there's undeniable proof that all society came out of Africa, that civilization came from Africa. But they don't show you that because they don't want you to see that the first man, they're not trying to promote that narrative. I don't make this up. So that's why I say it's very important for you all to start pushing back on your narrative. And again, like I brought up Donald Trump, so I'll bring I'll kind of bring him back up in here is that the one thing I can say that Donald Trump understood and, and white people, period, they understand the, that you have to control certain things. You have to control the military. You have to control the politics or the government and you have to control the media. If those are the three elements of society that you really need to control. If you can control the military, you can control the politics or the government, and you can control the media, you have control. And that's why you see, like, you'll always hear the United States blaming China for propaganda or for not allowing particular media to get into their country. You'll always see countries controlling their media and vice versa. The United States complain about it, but you see them controlling the media here too. You don't hear them talking about what they're doing to control um, Chinese media or Russian or, or communist um, propaganda from getting into the United States. Every country does it because they understand that you, they, if you, once something gets into your head, and you even hear the saying about, um, I've heard this said with Donald Trump and them, like, and that's the reason why Donald Trump kept repeating certain things. And he kept saying it over and over and over again, because you repeat something two or three or four times or enough times, it becomes a fact in a lot of people's mind. And Donald Trump understood the power of controlling the media. So if you notice the first things that Donald Trump did was he discredited certain media outlets, particularly the, the liberal outlets and he so he branded fake news he discredited them and then he promoted the outlets that he wanted to promote because they were pro him they were they were his um allies and that's what black people fail to understand and blacks what black people fail to do so again i wanted to make this video just kind of talking to you about egypt and again too like um if you're, you're familiar with um Ivan Van Sertima, um, who wrote They Came Before Columbus. Um, who was the other guy? Diop. I forget his name. Um, doesn't come to my mind right now, but I think his name was Diop. You had those individuals back in the early, I, I'm going to get my time frames wrong, but I guess 70s, maybe 60s. I don't know. But they were also individuals who said, hey, look, we have proof that the Africans arrived in the Americas before any other, they were the ones who had first contact with the indigenous Americans. Um, and those individuals, you know, we preceded um, um, uh, Christopher Columbus in coming to the Americas. But and they were also were, were the ones that wanted to say, hey, look, we can also prove that the Egyptian society was an a African society. They were Nubians. But they didn't want, but those people were discredited and they weren't allowed to run tests. They don't have the access that other governments are going to have. They're not going to give black people access to conduct tests on mummies. And they weren't going to give it to Ivan Van Sertima nor his people. 
because they want to control the narrative. And if any tests were done by them, they would have been discredited by mainstream media. And those tests would have been invalidated. They, they would have questioned the integrity and intelligence of Ivan Van Sertima and certain groups to even conduct those tests. I don't make this up. You look at the O.J. Simpson trial when O.J. Simpson got um, um, exonerated from the murders. One of the things that popped on the television was, were black people intelligent enough to understand DNA evidence? They started questioning the intelligence of the jury. I don't make this up, but this is Egypt controlling the narrative. Again, like I said, I understand why they're doing it. I can even I can even applaud them for their underhanded, erroneous, um, devilish tactics. Don't agree with it, but I understand why they're doing it, and I don't understand why black people don't incorporate these tactics into our daily lives. It's what we need to start doing. So once again, this is a political brown kid. Please like and subscribe. Also, share the video. Take care.